Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University, and Black Panther, excuse me, Ultimate Black Panther, issue number one. Did I like this comic book? I'm going to say I didn't dislike it. Was it bad? No. Did it have everything I was looking for? No. Is it potentially there in the next or future issue? Oh, you better believe it. You're talking about who made this comic book. Let's move on from there. The writer is Brian Hill, the artist Stefano Caselli. Color art by David Curiel. Letters by VCs Corey Petit. Cover art is uh, Stefano Caselli and David Curiel, and there's a bunch of varied covers out there as well as it typically is. Uh, or, excuse me, R. Black Panther was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Okay, so we start off with two of the spies from uh, uh, Wakanda, and they're seeing the, looks like just a bunch of workers getting shot up by very technologically advanced uh, Moon Knight flunkies. So it's Khonshu and Ra, or at least the avatars thereof. And they're demanding that all these things happen. That's cool. Egypt is technically in Africa also. I know that <laughs> a lot of Egyptians don't like to say that they're African, but they are in the continent of Africa. So I don't know. It's, it's a weird, funny thing. Um, I'm not going to debate it. I'm just not here for that. What I will say is that this is kind of a, an interesting and yet perfect way of doing things. I, I'm more so than seeing how the the world of Wakanda works in this particular instance. I'm actually far more interested in seeing how the world of the Moon Knight and the Sun God work together, because. One is constant, while the other is, I don't know, it tends to fluctuate. It seems to be ordered chaos. Very curious to see how these two will work with each other. If you remember, when the my cat is acting like a psychopath, every so often they get infected by demons and start chasing monsters that are invisible to my eyes, but animals, cats, see on better spectrums than I. Anyway, so if you hear the noise in the background, it's the cat <laughs> going crazy. So one of the cool parts I like about anything that Brian Hill writes is it's always going to be an insight into what the world is like. This is the thing that I'm banking on the most is that this world is just going to be insane because his way of thinking is influenced by so much while at the same time, there are many unique takes on ideas that sometimes they are completely new ideas. Sometimes they take an old idea and change it so much that they seem like entirely new ideas. They're barely recognizable, and I love seeing these distinctions. When the spies return, I thought was one of the most interesting aspects into what the Black Panther himself is going to be like. Because while he wakes up from a bad dream and sees the the world of Wakanda in front of him, and he's just like, mind you, I'm saying the world of Wakanda because it is kind of an, an entity into itself. Uh, it's not like one of those crazy things where the entire world is actually Wakanda, planet Wakanda or something like that. It's not that. Uh, the world that is the, con or the, um, the country of the nation of Antarctica. So anyway, when we see him get up, he says, we have to change that's always been the, the, the from the from the very inception of the character. Should we reveal ourselves to the world? You know, let me test my myself and 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 my country against the greatest super team ever, the Fantastic Four. Right? Uh, are we actually going to reveal ourselves? Should we keep ourselves hidden? Okay, we're about to reveal ourselves, and here's going to be that we can only do this once, and so on and so forth. And we see so much of that enveloped here. And apparently the Moon Knight and the, the Sun God, Ra, apparently these two understand and know of the existence of Wakanda. They, they've got to at this point, right? At one point there's a suicide bombing, which is nuts. Nuts. Chick goes and blows himself up and Panther has to go and get saved, uh, shoved off of a, a, a precipice in order to to survive, and he changes midway down, like, beautiful stuff, and when you see the, the, the costume, it's one of those things where the mouth is exposed, 
I don't know how much I like that, but whatever, good enough. We've seen it before, right? We've seen if if you've been reading the old Avengers comic books back when Black Panther wanted to becoming the leader of the the Avengers. It was very interesting. Like he he actually had the the open mouth thing. It's like that's right, I'm black. Look, take it, take it. <laughs> but um, what have you? At one point, the the cool thing is that we saw a very interesting version of Storm, and she's working with Killmonger. Now, while that by itself may seem like oh interesting, so which side of the fence is? Are, are either of these two characters, right? Are they good guys? Are they bad guys? What, which one is, which one changed sides, so to speak? Are these two lovers? More interesting is the idea that Brian Hill put Killmonger just for a single image and a quick name drop right in the first issue. Why is this so interesting to me? Do you remember one of the absolute greatest Killmonger stories ever? Not just where he has a moment where he throws child office no that i think it was five issues of killmonger where he goes and he actually starts dealing with his own gods goddesses you start to unravel and deconstruct who killmonger is in a very different way than we were used to and you got to see that he was vulnerable while at the same time still deadly right as soon as he showed Killmonger is going to be in this, but not yet. My ears kind of perked up, right? Like like an animal out there, a doe, trying to eat. And all of a sudden you hear the little, and you're like, Whoop. right? That, that was me. I was like, oh. So there's so much about this that is just in existence, not here yet, but here we go. And every single thing that was set up so far, the attack, the, the, the multiple attacks, T'Challa talking about things have to change. Knowing that people are, there are going to be some people who side with him, some people who do not side with him. Seeing how he's going to politic his way through these things. See how he's going to try and be this ultimate universe's Black Panther. I've always loved the concept of starting a whole new universe again with the same characters. Still leave the characters going in the 616. But over here, oh man, I love the idea of seeing a new version of the Ultimate Universe moving forward and how all the characters are going to interact with each other, how they're going to be on their own, what their new philosophies are going to be. So this is a great start to a comic book. Nothing, nothing mind-blowing happened, but there were so many little points that were hit that as long as this series goes on for more than five issues oh it's it could very easily be one of those series where you're just like holy crap what is going to happen next month when the next issue comes out right and those edge of your seat kind of stories are exactly what we need in comic books today let's hope this is one of them but it's got everything for it to be guys uh what do you, oh don't forget to check out the kickstarter going to be dropping Friday, all right? And uh, so any anything you're into puzzles and traps and Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of role-playing game, don't care if it's future, past, fantasy, whatever, boom, that's going to be there. After that, like the video, watch an ad, Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.